Welcome to the Gym Wits Podcast. I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, a.k.a. Chef Sonic. And we are the Gym Wits. So today we have something and someone very special. To all of our listeners, welcome the newest Gym Wit, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you all. I'm really excited to be on the team. So what's going on, Tony? What do you think about this weather? It's crazy. It's like 60 degrees out, and it's going to have a snowstorm tomorrow. What's with that? I don't know. I need to get out of New York. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so if um, for our listeners who are wondering, if you haven't figured it out by now, Tony is a girl. She spells her name with an I, correct? Yes. With an I? Yeah. I make sure. So just to get that out of the way and just to clear the air. So um, Tony, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. So my name is Tony Marinucci. I am a registered dietitian. I have a master's degree in nutrition and dietetics. And I pretty much have, since the age of like 14, taken on and absorbed every little bit of information about nutrition possible and applied it to my lifestyle. And through my career, I also decided to create my own blog. And I help people to develop and commit to a healthy lifestyle. So what uh, sparked your interest in uh, health and nutrition? Well, actually growing up, I was very overweight, um, but however, very athletic. And I played a lot of sports, but I felt that my weight was holding me back from my performance. And it was when I was in high school, as a sophomore, I had the opportunity to play on varsity sports, which usually is your junior year. You would do varsity, um, but on a skill level, I had it there and I knew I was trying out for the teams, but I just felt that my weight, I was just slower. I couldn't run the mile in the time that they requ- that they needed me to. And I don't know, I just felt like I needed to change the way that I was eating. Because, you know, as a teenager, all my friends would eat junk food. And then we would stay up late. And I wouldn't sleep well. And I'd go to practice in the morning and hate myself <laughs> for, like, overeating the night before. It's funny, the, the stuff that you can sort of get away with as a teenager. Although, you know what, I couldn't really get away with it much. I know there was other kids that could just eat anything and they'd be real stick right. thin. But that... It's just not the case for everyone. No, it definitely wasn't the case for me. Um, I grew up, I'm, if you couldn't tell, my last name's Marinucci, I'm Italian. I'm also Greek. I mean, if you have, if you ever watch my Big Pack Greek wedding, like, that's my family. So, <laughs> <laughs> the food is just everywhere and large. It'd be like a Monday night and it's at, we're at my aunt's house for dinner and then Tuesday we're at my other aunt's house for dinner. Wednesday is my mom's house and like, there's 20 of us for dinner on a weeknight. It, you know, and their food is just, all over the place. So if you didn't eat, you're, are you sick? Like, no, I'm not sick. Just not hungry. But you can never really give that answer. So um, it was definitely like I love my family. You know, food is love. And I think a lot of people can relate to that culture. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I realized that it was hindering my performance and sports were really important to me. So I decided to start eating more fruits and vegetables and, you know, choosing lean proteins and, you know, watching my portion sizes, cutting back on the junk food. I mean, it definitely didn't do it overnight. It was a lot of, you know, trial and error. Um, And what I recognized was when I was making those changes, I was definitely performing better. Um, You know, I was running faster. I was making my time during tryouts. Um, I had more focus and more drive. But secondly even my grades were better I wasn't I was paying better attention in school in my classes I was just more alert and the best part that I think the reason why I do what I do is I was so happy like (laughs) I used I was I didn't know I didn't know that I was unhappy until I realized like how happy you can be when you're eating right and taking care of your body and just overall just doing better in so many aspects of your life and I was just like wow like I need to share this with people. This is what I need to do. And then I realized, like, I for, I th- for a while I thought I wanted to be a teacher, but then I was like, oh, I can be a dietitian. Like, I can make this my career. Which is a teacher of sorts. Yeah, which I am a teacher, but I'm just teaching people how to, you know, eat healthy and eat right um, for either their goals or their body type. So certainly, I'm, I'm sure I've done this, and I don't really even know the answer myself, and I'm sure you'll help um, enlighten me. But a lot of people confuse what a nutritionist and a registered dietitian is. Can you explain what the difference between those are? Absolutely. Um, so a nutritionist is not a protected title. 
Mm. Um, so what that means is pretty much anyone can call themselves that. If you wanted to call yourself a nutritionist, you really could. Mm. Um, you know, and you, being the the knowledge that you guys have um, through people you've interviewed, um, being in the fitness industry, you understand so- certain parts about nutrition, and so therefore you can help people, um, and you can call yourself a nutritionist. Now, what it doesn't guarantee is also like Jim down the block who picked up a book and read it for 10 minutes can also call themselves a nutritionist. So it's one of those things that you don't really know. It's kind of a gamble. Can I call myself a nutritionist if I know how to make you not eat healthy? <laughs> like that's a certain type of nutrition, right? Like well, if I like put you on like the pizza and ice cream yeah, diet. Yeah, I mean you, you. I mean, I mean, how many times do you put on um, the TV and they'll say, you know, eat anything you want, never exercise, yeah. and lose weight? And yeah, you know, true. nutrition is <laughs> approved. Yeah. They can say that because it's not. It's no. There's nobody who has licensure on that title. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, however, a registered dietitian, it is a protected title. Mm-hmm. So no one can call themselves that. You have to go to school for that. <laughs> so what? And are there are there things that you can do as a dietitian that a nutritionist can't do? Yes. So yeah. registered dietitians work with other medical professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, we work with the doctors. We work with the nurses, and we work. We can work in hospital or clinical settings, and we work with people who were diagnosed with a disease. Um, so therefore, if they're taking medica- medication, excuse me, for diabetes. Um, will help couple that with a healthy diet that will also control their blood sugars. Um, so that's where a registered dietitian is able to work with other people in the medical profession. And you need a master's to a master's degree for to become a registered dietitian, correct? You actually don't need your master's okay. degree, but because it's so competitive, a lot of dietitians are doing that. Um, so in order to be a registered dietitian, you go through a four year undergraduate degree program where you're mm-hmm. learning what's called medical nutrition therapy. Okay. That's basically how people can modify their food choices so that way they can reach their nutrition goals, um, and heal themselves and maybe not have to take medication. Hmm. So we do that for four years when you're finished with your, for your four years. And if you get good grades and you're fit and you're active in your college you know in the college and you show that you are passionate and you do experience and you know I volunteered in hospitals and got as much experience as I could I was on clubs um once you get you know then you have to apply to your internship mm-hmm. so you could go four years with the goal to be a registered dietitian but then when you go to your apply for the internship only 50 percent actually get a match wow so you might not even be able to become one I mean you can then try again there's other ways to go sure. around it but once then you do your internship, you get accepted to that internship. Your internship is 1,200 hours of service in a bunch of different settings. Hospitals, nursing homes, awesome. community. Um, and then when you complete that, you have to sit for an exam and you take your exam. I just so happened to do my master's with my internship together. I was in an accelerated program. So that way I didn't have to do school ever again. <laughs> I was like, nice. all this school. I, was like, I just, I know I want my master's. If I want to get my doctorate, I'll wait for that. Yeah. Like I'm not doing that right now. I need to get this over with. So I chose that path. Um, but everyone's different. Um, but yeah, it takes, it's a lot of schooling to yeah. be a dietitian. Yeah, so I, I actually didn't know that. Like I thought for whatever reason, I thought that like a nutritionist was also a kind of protected title. I thought there was a difference in ed- education levels, but I guess it sounds like nutrition. This is almost sadly kind of similar to personal training where almost anyone can consider themselves a trainer. I guess you do have to get certified, but the certifying bodies vary so much that you could go to a certifying body that it practically, you're practically getting a master's in exercise science and mm-hmm. then you can get certification programs that are, you know, it's like you read a book over a course of a weekend and then you take a test and you're a certified trainer. So it sounds like... yeah. Exactly. I mean, an an important difference that um, a lot of people, I don't think, understand. I think, you know, a lot of people are just so anxious to get help. They think that, like, they see someone that knows how to do it, so therefore they can teach them how to do it. But that's not always the case. Well, I get, I'm amazed at the amount of medical advice people ask me for Mm -hmm. and nutrition advice that people ask me Mm -hmm. for. It's like yesterday no Monday even um, I teach a, like a class at um, Hunter College a group fitness class and it's for just for faculty and staff and they're they're uh, 
they, they, it's like a regular, like a kind of strength training one on one. So they're learning the ropes of the the gym. But a woman came in, she's like, "Yeah, I'm doing physical therapy and and um, seeing somebody else for my knee. I have, I have no cartilage in my knee. I can't do anything for my knee." It's like, "All right, well, <laughs> uh, you can we can modify things, but you know, a lot of this class involves legs." But mm-hmm. but she then started asking me like what she could and couldn't do for her knee, and I kept having to say, "Look, I'm not a." I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. Correct. You should, even if I gave you advice, you should not listen to my advice because right. I'm not qualified to give that. But people, if if you have any kind of title, you're right. Like they will seek out attention, and that it, it's like the it's like ripe for people to take advantage of it, as mm-hmm. I'm sure you've probably experienced. Yeah, with with, or with experience people who have been taken advantage of by other kind of professionals, yeah, so-called well, professionals. I respect you for kind of letting them know that I have to do that in my profession you know um people like we were I was saying before they they want help they're so desperate for answers um a lot of times people will come to me for nutrition but there's usually an underlying source um sure. so people get really emotional and tears fly and I have to remind them like I'm not a social worker I'm not a therapist I can help and provide you that service but we need to focus on your nutrition goals and you yeah. really have to bring it back to them and I think that you'd be doing them a disservice if you did provide them with with uh, recommendations because you don't know yeah. and you're actually you think you're helping them but you're no. actually hurting them. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very common. I, so so often I'll see people that will give the advice or or whether they they want to or not, like almost they feel obligated to. But yeah, for me it's like yeah, I know my you know one of the best uh, pieces of advice I was ever given when I started as a trainer was like know what you know but know what you don't know. Yeah, and like know when to refer. So that's also like, as part of the podcast why we don't talk nutrition much between Justin and I because we're not experts. So anything right. we talk about, it, it's got to be very basic because otherwise we're, we're doing a disservice to our own listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So really, a nutritionist is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't it, know that. It means nothing. It's <laughs> like calling yourself a nothing. Nutritionist, not a dietitian. It's a nutritionist means nothing. You know what I mean? It's kind of just like a word that means nothing. You know, you're, well, yeah, I'm just not going to. I try to keep everything positive. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's best just to ignore Justin. He's keeping it real. <laughs> we need that in this world. Oh, boy. Anyhow, so well, speaking of keeping it real, a, a big part of your plan and your program is what you call SMART goals with, mm-hmm. you know, the capital S-M-A-R-T. Can you tell us what uh, what's, what your SMART goals are and how it helps people with really um, maintaining a, a, a diet that works, for, you know, and is sustainable? Yeah. So uh, the first thing that I tell my clients right off the bat is... Like, they'll come into my office. I want to lose 50 pounds in a month. And I'll just, you know, right away, I'm just like, okay, I understand and I hear that you want to lose this weight, but let's let's set the ground rules first. Let's kind of get a better understanding of what your goals are and how can we actually make them achievable and stay long term. Because if you want me to help you to lose 50 pounds in a month, I can, but I can't promise that you're going to keep that off. And I would never really want someone to do that because it's not healthy. Uh, Rapid weight loss usually comes from the muscle, as you guys probably know. Um, So regardless, um, so what I have people do is I have them tell me their goals and then we make we go through and make sure that they're smart. Smart is an acronym for S specific, M measurable, A attainable, R realistic and T total body. So what that means is if you if it's going to take you, you know, lack of sleep, um, time away from your family and friends, you can't go out um, on the weekends and be social for the rest of your life to ach- to achieve a, a weight loss goal. You know, is that really a total body? Is that healthy? Is <laughs> you know, we put it into perspective for the person. Um, so I really try to, you know, let people understand that. You know, it's not a race. Um, s- slower is actually better because it's all about forming habits and that takes time. You know, a lot of people, I work with a lot of people that are postmenopausal or, um, you know, they just had a heart attack at the age of 50 and it's like 50, you know, y- you made these habits over 50 years. You're not going to defeat them in, in, you know, a day or so. It's going to take, it's not going to take another 50 years because you're actively working on it. Whereas before it was like subconscious. But it's going to take time. And it's something that no one wants to hear. No, yeah. like patience is is you know patience is a virtue, but it's a lost virtue. So few people want to hear. Oh, it's going to take some time. In almost any 
any facet of life, no one wants to hear that. No. We all want quick results. No, but I mean, I, a lot of times what I do with my clients is I put into put it into perspective and I use something outside other than food and nutrition sure. um, and, you know, weight management. And I think about like, OK, if you're in debt, it, you can't like unless like how are you possibly going to get out of debt like overnight? You're going to win the lottery. You, you Like your chances of that are slim to none. Exactly. So you have to come up with a plan. You have to be specific and you have to be consistent. Because you could, if you're trying to say, get out of debt, you can save money for a year and then you blow it and there you're right back to square one. Yeah. So I try to like put it in, you know, give people another side, of, another viewpoint. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. It's very Jim Witsian, <laughs> your, 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 your methods. We're all about planning and consistency. And I always say every workout, every healthy meal is money put in your health bank. Yes. Right. Yes. And it adds up over time. And it's kind of what you were saying with the whole being in debt. Right. Yeah. Be, being in uh, in health debt. Yeah. It's absolutely. A good term. Yeah. That's a, I like that term. We should use that. <laughs> <laughs> health debt. Um, yeah. I mean, me like medication is really expensive. Insurance is really expensive. Um, Co-payments. Co it, it's it's Do you definitely really want to take medication if you don't have to. Yeah. Right. Oh. And then, the, yeah, the side effects that come along with it. So it really your health is an investment for sure. And how do you apply like the smart goals to your clients? Like, what do you, how do you use them, you know, and someone's in some, once, it, once you've kind of explained to them mm -hmm. why it's important, how are you able to kind of apply it so that it, they're able to be successful? So we write it down. I write it down so that way I can follow up when mm -hmm. I have the follow up appointment with them. So I know where, where we left off. I make sure we, we update them as we go. Um, so that way I ask what worked, what didn't work, what do we have to change? Um, and I have them write them down because when you write down a goal, you're more likely to stick to it. Um, and then when, as we're writing it down together, we make sure it makes sense. So I have, okay, someone's trying to eat more fruit. Okay. You can't just put down, I'm going to eat more fruit. That's not, a, that's not going to be, you're not going to get that goal. How are you going to eat more fruit? Okay, more fruit is what? Three pieces of fruit a day. When are you going to have those fruits? With breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What types of fruit? Some people don't like half the fruit that's out there. So for me to have them eat strawberries and bananas when they can't stand the taste of them, that's not a realistic goal. So, okay, what fruits do you like? What fruits are in your reach? What when can, what, can you go to the grocery store? Like, are they in season right now? Do they taste good? Um, do you have time to, to get it? Or is it best to just keep frozen fruit and make a smoothie? Like, what's the most realistic way to apply that? And that's just... Number one, that's being specific. So if you think about, then we do a measurable, okay? So how are we going to assess if this works? When you come back, we're going to see, did you hit it or did you not? Is this attainable? Yes, no. Is it realistic? Um, is this healthy? Yes. And then that's how kind of we do it with each one that they set for themselves. Some people, we do one goal at a time. Other people want to do two. It's really up to the person what they're ready for. Um, and I really try to let them know that it's a process. So even though it seems like, you're only working on fruit. How am I ever going to get to my goals if I'm only working on fruit? I let them know that we're going to update it and you have to be patient. And I promise you that, believe it or not, I think the biggest thing that people are always in shock about is like, I barely did anything and I, and I still lost weight. And I'm not being like the people on, the, on social media, like on, um, you know, on the news saying you don't have to do anything. You have to do something, but you don't, ha it doesn't have to be extreme. A little bit goes a long way, but it goes back to what you were saying before is that consistency. Mm -hmm. You have to do it for more than a week. It's mm -hmm. going to work, but you have to trust the process. So I guess two questions what do you say to the person that does want the fast? Like, how do you convince, mm -hmm. how do you take somebody who in their mind, they want the fast results? How do you convince them to slow it down and, mm -hmm. but do it in a way that they're exci still excited about it. Right. And yeah. then I guess the second part would be, um, how do you keep somebody motivated knowing like we all know people are excited when they start and then that drifts. So I guess they kind of both kind of fall into each other. But how do you keep someone going after those first couple of weeks when they're when they're when the ex excitement starts to wane? Yeah. So, well, to answer your first question about someone who really wants that quick fix, um, I usually ask them, what have they done in the past? Mm -hmm. And then I ta ask them, what was the results? And the answer usually is I lost 20 pounds and then I gained back 30. Mm -hmm. So then I say, OK, so do we want to try a different approach? I really have them kind of tell me um, what they think might work 
what didn't work um, and kind of hope that they see. And then I'll meet them in the middle. I'll say, okay, you know, right now you want quick results. I can give you something that's going to expedite the matters, but you have to promise me that we try it. And when we come back, we start to work in the realistic ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you give them the freedom, they respect that. They appreciate that. Um, And then they they really start to kind of think about what you said, and then they're kind of more ready the second time. Mm -hmm. Um, And then to kind of keep them motivated, (sighs) uh, it depends on my client. (laughs) Um, I have a lot of different outlets of the way I work with people. Um, And a a lot of them, I I kind of do the small goals and then the big goals. Um, as they reach the small goals, it gives them that confidence and therefore they want to continue. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes it really, it takes, um, takes that tough love mm-hmm. that, you know, and you can't always develop that relationship with all of your clients, but I've been fortunate enough where I work with people for a year or so now where I'm at the, where they're actually consistent. So it, I'm really just the kind of that person that when they fall off track, they call me and I get them back on track. It's like, they know they can, they, um, I'm their support system. They don't depend on me, um, but they know that my door is always open. They can always give me a call and I can give them a plan to get back on track and to put that focus back. Cause I think sometimes people think they did so bad. And I kind of reassure them like the fact that you called me is wonderful. First of all. And second of all, okay, y- you did, but you can continue doing this bad for another week and then continue to feel bad about yourself or we can get back on track right now. Um, and so I can't, I can only really help them if they reach out to me. Mm. Um, other than that, I do, I always do support my clients in any way that I can. So I'll probably, probably know the answer, but do you find you're more successful with people that are where you're more hands on and more involved or when you're le- like kind of more hands off and less involved in their program and their day to day or week to week or month to month? Imagine a lot of that has to do with the individual, yes. but I think I know the answer to this one as well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it usually is um, in the individual. Some people don't want me to like contact them every day. Other people need me to every day. Yeah. Um, and I kind of feel that out, but I also have learned through this process that a lot of people don't want to admit that they need help. So sometimes I am there for them, even if they don't respond to me, I'll send them like a quick quote or something, you know, that keeps them motivated. Um, I'll send them a reminder, like, make sure you drink your water today. Um, and I th- and they, they do appreciate that because I'll get like a text like a couple days. I'm sorry, I was really busy, but that really helped me out. Like, so I don't get discouraged if I don't get a response. I know that I'm helping them. And I know that sometimes people don't want to always reach out for help when they need it. So when I when I work with a new client and it kind of went over it so but when I like working with a new client um a lot of it's like I feel like I have to interview them mm-hmm. and gather information yeah. before I figure out how I'm going to approach the person. So do you find that that you that you have to do that more or do you kind of have a plan that you stick to when you're doing that initial kind of consultation with the client? No, I interview like I always explain to the person I say this is for me to get to know you. Um at the end you can uh, plenty of time to ask me questions to get to know me but I really need to understand you and your lifestyle so we can set those realistic goals so I ask everything about you know their gym their work life like are they working from home do they commute to work um what's their past medical history like uh, obviously we'll talk about their medical history like you know so they come to me for weight loss and it's like well, when was the last time you went to the doctor? Did you get blood work done? How's your blood work? They're, you know, everything's fine. Um, then I'll ask, well, do your mom, does your mom or your dad have anything? And I'm like, oh yeah, my dad has diabetes. I was like, okay, so let me know what your, and I'm, we won't get too like labby, but like your hemoglobin A1C, which dictates if you have diabetes or not, or if you're pre-diabetic, what was that number? And then they tell me and I'm like, okay, so we actually have to watch that. Cause unfortunately sometimes the doctors don't do the best job explaining it. And I, I do, I respect a lot of doctors, um, but I think that they don't really like to have that conversation. Um, so I kind of find myself in that position to really help them understand that, okay, the reason why we're doing this is not just because you want to look good and you want to feel good, but it's because you are more at risk for, d- for getting that illness. So we need to be more proactive and work towards preventing that. Because that working towards preventing diabetes is going to be different than working towards preventing um, heart disease. Like, there are going to be different ways we're going to go about it. So now, a huge thing that the gym wits are, um, you know, well, we're really all about it, is debunking the myths and the misconceptions. 
And of course, whenever you have a field or topic where there's so much information, there's also a lot of misinformation. And just as in the fitness world, in the nutrition and health world, I'm sure there are so many misconceptions or at least bits of information that do not apply to everyone or that are, or bits of information that are taken out of context mm -hmm. and used in order to sell a product or a service or something like that. So could you just tell us about some big misconceptions sure. in sort of the, you know, the health you know, and you know, nutrition industry. Yeah. I mean, the first one that comes to mind, I mean, especially um, with like with the fitness world and just overall exercises, people are so afraid of carbohydrates. And I really need to always kind of put it into perspective that carbohydrates are what give you energy. If you don't have carbohydrates in the diet, you are going to be miserable. <laughs> like, sure. And I've been through that and yeah, I was miserable. <laughs> yeah. Like they give your brain energy. They keep you attentive. However, with that being said, what sources are your carbohydrates? I can't tell you how many people tell me they don't eat fruit because it, it's sugar. Just like, oh. <laughs> like, you know, the sugar in fruit is natural. There's fiber. It's a low calorie food. There's usually high water content. Like you don't have to be worried about the sugar in fruit, you know, um, once again, I'm sure there's, there's, there's gonna, you know, maybe that was the one person that I would have to limit it to whatever reason, but m majority of people can eat fruit. It's more of like restricting your carbohydrates from things that are refined carbohydrates that have very, we call empty calories, no nutritional value, soda, candy, um, you know, cakes and cookies and white bread and white toast and white rice. I mean, they can fit in the diet, but they really shouldn't take up a majority of your diet. So I think it's about taking what people say and kind of explaining the reason why behind it um, rather than just telling them, no, that's not true or yes, that's true. Um, so I usually find myself not just saying like, yes, you can have fruit, but explaining why you can have fruit. It's a great source of carbohydrates. It will give your body energy, but you won't feel that like sugar high and crash. Um, you'll get a lot of nutrition like vitamin C, vitamin A, um, antioxidants that prevent disease. Like, and I'll go on and on, whatever I need to, in order to get them to understand that it's okay to have fruit, but they should limit their other sources of carbohydrates. No, no to some... To some extent, there's a difference between like with like the glycemic index of certain fruits, but like I'll, you'll hear some people say that like pineapples are bad to have, mm -hmm. but bananas are good, or apples mm -hmm. are great, but you shouldn't. Like, does it really matter which type of fruits you're having? That's a great question. Actually, um, I, so I have um, a YouTube channel, and I actually have a um, a whole show about like busting the myths of fad diets. And one of the questions that I addressed was someone had at told they're like I hear bananas are bad for me should I avoid bananas and my first response it, it was obviously no and then I explained why um and you know the thing is, is like different fruits tend to have our different sizes and bananas tend to be much larger so therefore they do have more carbohydrates but it's still a great source of carbohydrates unless you are so someone who's diabetic and that we can do on another show they don't even have to avoid carbohydrates but they do have to count their carbohydrates so that way it can either go in with their insulin or control their blood sugars if they're taking something like metformin you know so there's a total difference um per person but no all fruit is they're all fruits do have different properties though so for example a banana is very high in potassium where you're going to have an orange which is high in vitamin c and it has a little bit of potassium but you're going to get a better source from a banana so if you're an athlete trying to replenish your electrolytes you know bananas um and oranges might be a better choice versus like an apple that is more vitamin c rich and not has much doesn't have as much potassium like but really it's still fruit so <laughs> eat it <laughs> yeah now how about fat now that's mm -hmm. I know that in the 90s there was this big war on fat and I always knew I was like you know what something doesn't sound right. I know that fat sounds bad because of the name of fat. Mm -hmm. But what do you what do you think about fat and and the whole, and the whole deal? And I was and another thing is and I just knew it and same with cholesterol, mm -hmm. right? I always knew like I'm looking at eggs and there was sort of a, a yeah, eggs are you don't want to eat too many eggs. I'm like, "Really?" I've always thought eggs are one of the most nutritional thing you know you could eat, mm -hmm. nutrient rich. So what what about the, what's the deal with fat? Okay, so great question. Fat very similar to carbohydrates. There's good sources and there's bad sources. Uh, so you want to make sure that a majority of what you're consuming are from what's called 
unsaturated fats. So those are natural, usually plant-based sources like avocado and olive oil and nuts and seeds. Um, And they're going to have your unsaturated fats, which if you think about the way that our blood flows through the body, I'm going to get a little bit more visual for you guys. So pay attention. So you think about your blood flowing through the body, right? And now you drink something like olive oil or you put olive oil in a salad. It is the same fluid motion of the blood. So therefore it's going to be a healthy source of fat. However, now think about something like butter in a solid form. It's saturated fat. So you consume that and it will clot the blood. And that's how people end up too much of it you get a plaque buildup and therefore you're at greater risk for heart disease and high cholesterol. So now kind of going to your cholesterol question, it's not cholesterol in food that raises cholesterol in the body. It's saturated fat that raises Mm. cholesterol in the body. Also that sugar can really affect it as well. Yes. So simple sugars, like we were saying before, um, simple carbohydrates won't just affect your blood sugars, but it'll actually affect the types of fat. It's called your triglycerides. It's part of the bad cholesterol. So when you go for your annual blood work, you should be getting a lipid panel where you're going to get your total cholesterol, you, which you're going to get your LDL, your bad, your lousy cholesterol, which you don't want to be high. You're going to get your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, which is saying that you're doing things like exercising and consuming those heart healthy, unsaturated fats. And then you're going to get your triglycerides, which usually become elevated through excess simple carbohydrates and alcohol, actually. So too much alcohol will raise your triglycerides. Hmm. Any other uh, foods that maybe had a had a bad rap that people thought were unhealthy but are actually really healthy and what are some other how about some some meats or proteins that really should be incorporated in in people's diet i know people talk a lot about fish especially mm-hmm. you know the good salmon or something like that is that you know is that true or what are some what are some good foods and what are some other you know foods that people should consume yeah so um i'm glad that you asked me about the food that was had a bad rap that has a good one now, and that is the egg that we, I meant to address that. Um, so studies in the past have shown, you know, registered dietitians go based off of medical nutrition therapy. So medical nutrition therapy is based off of science and scientific evidence that's been proven again and again and again. So in the past, science has shown cholesterol raised cholesterol, but now new science is showing that it's saturated fat that raises cholesterol. Um, so people would fear the egg yolk because it is has almost 200 milligrams of cholesterol, which is your maximum for the whole day, which used to be the recommendations. Um, but now we're kind of debunking that and it's going to take a while. So I do apologize for everyone. You might read something and it'll still say something about eggs being yeah. bad, but it, they're not. Eggs are great um, because they're a great source of vitamin D, which a lot of people are lacking, especially in New York because uh, of the lack of sun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then vitamin B12, which is really great to help convert all those nutrients in your body to um, usable sources. So the egg yolks used to have a bad rap, but they're wonderful. So keep eating eggs. <laughs> they're a great source of protein. And then fish is a wonderful cell source of protein. Um, and they have what are called omega-3s. Omega-3s are part of the unsaturated fats that are going to support heart health. Um, so the American Heart Association recommends that an individual to prevent or to support a healthy heart has about two servings of fish per week. Um, and a serving would be my, probably about like the size of your hand, like your pa- a palm-sized piece of protein. So like a palm-sized piece of salmon, a palm-sized piece of um, you know tilapia. But once again, making sure that you use healthy cooking method, right? If you take that fish and you fry it, <laughs> Are you actually going to get all those benefits with it? Not as much. Let's say you'll get them, but it's not going to be as much as if you bake, grilled, or broiled that fish. So what about the um, all-bacon and ice cream diet? (laughs) Oh, boy. Not going to (laughs) work. You know, I think, you know, God, I get a lot of times where it's like, I know that I can lose weight if I just eat less. And that's true. You, you, you have to remember that it is calories in, calories out. But, you know, how are you going to feel if you only 500 calories of bacon and ice cream? Yeah. First of all, that portion's going to be real small. Yeah. So if you can survive on like 500 calories of bacon and ice cream, you're basically getting like two pieces of bacon and like a half a cup of ice cream. And that's your whole cat. Ca- like yeah. that's as much you need for the day. Um, so you're not going to feel good. Um, and then at the end of the day, like, are you getting your fruits and your vegetables and your whole grains, your antioxidants, like all those foods that are going to prevent you from getting sick, you know? 
and this is probably this is probably a discussion for another time, but I also find that the people that do they'll eat let's say the bacon and ice cream diet and then do a vitamin supplement like that's not enough right like you should be getting it from the source and right yeah right you want to try to get it through food first yeah um so i i recommend that to my clients and my patients all the time you want to get um nutrition from the food first if you go and you get your blood work done and it comes back that you are um deficient in a vitamin or a nutrient therefore your doctor might prescribe or to tell you to supplement then you supplement, yeah. you know, and that and that's fine. But you could also then also too, like if you know, um, and it, a lot of Americans are really, really seriously. I've been seeing it more and more in my office because I think also I think they're finally testing for more um, are vitamin D deficient. Mm-hmm. So yes, you should take a vitamin D supplement. How much we still don't know the recommended dosage, um, but the doctor can help uh, help you adjust that to help your vitamin D levels get up. But at the same time. Let's work together and in, improve your sources of vitamin D yeah. through food. So then you don't have to take a supplement. Yeah. So when you have a, a well, I guess someone, let's say we have a listener who's trying to turn things around. Um, they're struggling as many people, many people do. What would be a couple, like if you can give one or two like solid tips for somebody to help them kind of start to turn things around for their diet? Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's everyone's so different, but I mean, oh, I think f- number one is, are you eating three meals a day? I know a lot of people skip meals, um, and that's never good because you don't have enough opportunity to eat the nutrients you need, and then you usually get so hungry that you end up craving things like salt, sugar, and fat, which should be, or, you know, the bad sugar and the bad fat, um, that you really should be limiting in the diet, so therefore you're not having a balanced meal. So um, I usually just tell them to eat three meals a day, um, and then secondly i don't even know if this is really a tip it's more a strategy um i'll tell them to write down their food Mm. because so many people are just not conscious of what they're eating Mm -hmm. and once you bring that awareness then they do a lot of the changes they see what they need to work on a lot of us know we need to be eating more fruits and vegetables a lot of us know we should be drinking more water A lot of us know we should be having three meals a day, but a lot of us aren't doing it. So why? And you have to be able to put it down on paper to see what your usual habits are before you can really do anything after that. Awesome. Uh, Tony, you are amazing. You have this incredible wealth of knowledge, and Mm -hmm. I think you fit in so awesomely with the whole you know, Jim Witsian way of thinking. Are you, are, so. you, are you sure you still want a girl on your team? Absolutely. 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 We have to change your logo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, one more, of course. It's, it's, it's perfect. Tony, please let us know where we can find you. Let's. Yeah, I know you have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Let, let us know about that stuff. Where can we find you online? Sure. So my website is www.tipswithtony, Tony with an I, T-O-N-I, dot com. Um, on there, you get my recipes. Um, you can have my links to my YouTube channel, um, my services, all that stuff. And then I also have an Instagram account at tips underscore with underscore Tony. Once again, T O N I. I have a Facebook page, Tips with Tony. I have a Twitter account, Tips with Tony. Um, I'm I'm really. I think even if you Google Tips with Tony, I'll pop up. Like <laughs> I've been doing awesome. this since That's college. Awesome. I love what I do. Um, I love helping people, and I'm so happy that I finally have had my blog grow um so i think you'll be able to find me um through one of those sources great and uh so yeah yeah it's been great and well we will have for our listeners we'll have tony back on in a few weeks so if you have questions just like we do the ask the quaint ask the trainer segment um we'll do the ask the dietitian uh for next time so if you have questions please send them in uh you can send them to you can find send them what's your email Tips with Tony at yahoo.com. So you can send it to Tony or you can send it to us at the gymwits at gmail.com. So either way, uh, if you have questions, definitely send them and we'll have we'll try to get some of them, a few of them answered on the next podcast. Well, so I'm really excited. I think that, uh, Tony, you're going to bring us some awesome information and really be uh, really excellent and really big help for our listeners. You know, this is sort of the, the big thing that we are lacking. We are not registered dietitians, so your knowledge well, is going to be... We can now say we're nutritionists. Yes, we are nutritionists. <laughs> we, we, we are nutritionists. We're just, not di- we're just not registered dietitians. So, Tony, thank you so much for coming on the show, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. I'm, I'm looking so forward. Yeah, it's going to be great. So, um, 
yeah, everyone, write in, you know, write your questions, and I'm sure Tony is going to do an, uh, an incredible job in answering them. All right, so as usual, uh, you can find all of our stuff at thegymwits at gmail.com. Um, if you listen to us on iTunes, rate us there. If you listen to us on Stitcher, rate us there. Um, download the app if you haven't yet. We're on iTunes and Android. And that's it. I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, a.k.a. Chef Sonic. And I'm Tony Marinucci, a.k.a. Tips with Tony. And we are the, the Gym, Gym Wits. Wits.